Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of the Lucky Stars trilogy, which consists of three Hong Kong films, Winners and Sinners from 1983, My Lucky Stars from 1985, and Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars from 1985. Now all of them were directed by Sam Oh Hung, he also starred in all three, while Jackie Chan and Yun Byu had supporting or limited roles in them. Now, technically, there are other films included within this franchise, but these three titles could be considered a trilogy of sorts due to the involvement of the aforementioned people. And these could be considered action comedies or perhaps comedy action flicks since the humor is kind of up front and center here. So let's go through them. We got Winners and Sinners from 1983, Five Prisoners, uh, Teapot, played by Sam Oh Hung, Curly, played by John Sham. Exhaust Pipe, played by Richard Ng, uh, Vaseline, played by Charlie Chin, and Rookie, played by Stanley Fung, all meet in their cell and form a friendship. Now, following their release, they team up with Curly's beautiful sister, Shirley, played by uh, Cherry Chung, and they form the Five Stars Cleaning Company. Now, most of the group attempt to vie for Shirley's affection, but they are eventually forced to fight bad guys. <laughs> so the film opens with like this, this pretty funny scene where Samo attempts to escape from a break-in attempt, but he mistakenly makes the cop's job easy by capturing himself. And then another guy steals some uh, car tires but chooses an off-duty cop's car by mistake. There's a funny con man scene uh, involving some uh, jewelry theft. So all of these guys get caught at the beginning of the film. And uh, one thing I do appreciate, though, is that each of these characters are pretty different and distinctive from the others. So they each bring something unique to the film. Now, the opening 40 or so minutes basically focus entirely on situational humor. And the comedy actually does work pretty well in this one, which is important because there's quite a bit of it. It's probably the most consistent of the trilogy in terms of its humor. However, in some sense, this movie feels like, like a bunch of skits involving the same actors with kind of a lack of emphasis on story and conflict. I mean, there are times where I, I had no idea who the bad guys were going to be in this film or what the main conflict was going to be. It was just like comedy skits for a while. Eventually, we get like an essentially random conflict involving a suitcase full of cash that accidentally makes its way into like their cleaning van and then it goes from there. So that's kind of how these films work. They're kind of, I don't know if I would say scattershot, but uh, maybe a little unfocused. Now in my recent review of Millionaire's Express, I did es express a little bit of frustration because that movie had like an insane number of action stars, but had a surprising lack of action for most of the runtime. That flaw I think is less egregious here in these Lucky Stars films. Like, I was not not as frustrated with the lack of action in, in chunks here. Maybe because most of the leads were not action stars. I mean, of the five main protagonists in this Lucky, Lucky Stars thing, Samuel's the only one who I would expect to, to, to kick butt in an action scene. So the other guys are basically contributing comedy. And then, of course, you have, you have Jackie and Yun, too, but they... They basically have extended cameos in, in a lot of these films. So, um, yeah. But uh, I do think an extra fight or two would have been nice, especially during the opening 40 minutes in this one. But the action does pick up a bit after that. We get a, a dwarf with a gun, a revolver, who shows up. And uh, he tries to rob a restaurant. And Jackie and Samo fight the goons and save the day. Pretty entertaining confrontation. One of the action highlights is a... Really neat roller skate car chase involving Jackie Chan. You know, I won't tell you the specifics, but he's basically chasing a car on roller skates, which is pretty cool. Some pretty impressive stunts in that one, and it kind of ends with a pretty crazy series of car crashes. Now, later on, there's a good fight in a large mansion and another good fight in a warehouse to end the film. The choreography in these, this film in particular, and actually kind of the others too, but it's... It's kind of scrappy here, but it's fun to watch with some impactful hits and hard falls by the stuntmen. I do like how the less athletic actors get into the, the fights themselves, and uh, they, they have some memorable moments. So I kind of liked how they structured the fights to get everyone involved. 
Uh, Dick Wei and Ching Ying Lam have small roles, and Yun Biu and Moon Li uh, basically have a cameo together in this. Yeah. Entertaining movie. I liked it. Now we move to the second one, My Lucky Stars, 1985. Uh, a corrupt Hong Kong cop, played by Ching Ying Lam, flees to Tokyo to join his fellow mobsters, and they hide in, a, in an amusement park. And then you get uh, Yun Biu and Jackie Chan travel there to apprehend them and uh, uncover their lair. But uh, Yun's character is kidnapped in the fight. So Jackie goes to his supervisor, like, hey, could you get my five buddies together? Um, and uh, we could take these guys down. So that's really the, uh, the plot. And then our love interest in this is, is Sybil Hu. So we have a similar group of protagonists, but John Shum was replaced by Eric Sang in this one. So there's a little bit of inconsistency there in terms of actor in, the, in one of the, the big five roles. But really, you can't worry a lot about the continuity between these first two films because, you know, the, the roles are a bit different, like the characters themselves are a bit different, and it's probably not the best to consider this a direct sequel because technically it's really not. And yes, this does take place in Japan. A bunch of scenes are, were actually shot there on location. So you have this opening scene. Now, this film is different because it actually gives you an action scene up front, which I liked. You know, this opening scene involves Jackie Chan and Yun Byu. Uh, there's a car chase. It incorporates some good stunt work. And then uh, we get a pursuit in an amusement park, and Jackie and Yun demonstrate their climbing and leaping abilities. And we get a pretty good fist fight involving some ninja but uh yeah and then the movie goes from there the next like 50 minutes though devote themselves to comedy and you're going to see that a lot in this trilogy where you have chunks of time where there's like no action or limited action and uh but you know similar to the first film i do think the humor in this one generally works uh there is a long string of bedroom pranks involving a lady officer they were amusing but they do get a bit repetitive and drawn out. Like, I almost felt like it was like a Paul Feig movie. We're like, okay, Paul, I got the joke. You can you can edit now, and, and you know, you can edit now, and it just keeps going. Like it goes too long. But uh, the final bedroom prank of all of them is pretty hilarious. I thought it was. It's one of the best gags in the trilogy. I, I was laughing because it was kind of unexpected, believe it or not. But uh, yeah, but you know the action. Again, these films, like, you, you get a little uh, impatient with the lack of action at times, but then it, it steps up and delivers. So, the final half hour has two good fights. You get an apartment brawl, and then the haunted house climax, involving a number of characters. So, there's this haunted house near the end. Uh, it's a haunted house attraction, and it's pretty neat. You know, you get Jackie Chan moving his way through a series of fake scares, and then real people try to kill him. You know, while he's moving through this thing. Uh, there's like a snowy ice realm of this little uh, amusement park, which is really neat. And there are people in costumes and everything, too. So I liked it. I liked it. I, it definitely elevated the film. And then we transition to a more traditional finale uh, with fights, to, like, immediately after that. And you have Dick Wei and Michiko Nishiwaki make their presence felt in this finale. Uh, I was disappointed in how they used Ching Ying Lam in this film. I mean, he, he didn't even really fight at all at the end of the film. It was just kind of like a very abrupt ending, which I did not like. Uh, but still, the finale is satisfying from an action standpoint. It were, this movie reminded me in some ways of, like, Beverly Hills Cop uh, 3, <laughs> that one. Although it's it's better than that film, because both take place in an amusement park. And don't, don't worry, this is far better than Beverly Hills Cop 3, but just uh, it reminded me of it. So... Yeah, I did think that My Lucky Stars was uh, an entertaining film. Then we get Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars, released the same year, 1985. And um, you basically get the Lucky Stars uh, helping an actress who has information on a crime syndicate and uh, assassins are being sent after her. Uh, yeah, that's basically your plot. It really is. And, and of course, our protagonist chase this girl around and try to get into bed with her, because that's what they like to attempt to do. There is a little bit more continuity between Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars in the last film compared to the first. Um, but uh, this is also shot in Thailand, so it 
distinguishes itself from the other two films. Now, this cast is probably even more loaded than the past two. Because you get Samo, you get Jackie, you get Yun. Then you got Yasuaki Karata showing up here, Richard Norton, Michelle Yeoh has a cameo, and Andy Lau is in this as well. So it's like, uh, and on top of that, you have Rosamund Kwan and Kara Huey also have small roles. So it's a little overwhelming in this one, for sure, in terms of the, uh, the star power here. I like seeing these faces, but again, it, it almost feels like kind of a compilation of skits at times instead of an actual narrative story. I mean, even most brainless action films out of Hong Kong have, like, your main conflict. You know what I mean? You kind of know what it is throughout the film. But these Lucky Stars films, I, like... There's times where I, like, forget. I'm like, wait, who who are the bad guys in this again? <laughs> you know, like, what, wait, what's going on again? So you have a little bit of that there. It's a little sloppy. But again, the big finale just, it leaves a good taste in your mouth. I mean, the action in this one is kind of spaced out a little bit more uh, than the previous two. Like, 20 minutes in, uh, you know, you get that opening scene, which is nice, again. And then you get about 20 minutes that are just kind of, like, slow. You know what I mean? They, they, they try to, they try to, um, they try to, like, bed, uh, the lead actress a lot, again, in this. And it almost feels like a police academy movie in some ways, too. Because <laughs> these guys are just in all kinds of shenanigans. But I didn't feel like the humor in the third film was as good as the previous ones. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wasn't all that impressed with it. But still, even early on, like, uh, you have an action scene early on in this, which is important, and you basically get three action scenes within quick succession in the middle of the film, which I think helps the pacing. There's a short assassination scene, a good fight involving female assassins, and then you get a warehouse fight involving Jackie Chan, Yun Byu, and Andy Lau, and it's a surprisingly good scene for a middle-of-the-movie fight scene. Uh, some might say it's the best uh, action sequence of the film is in the middle. Uh, nice choreography, good stuntman falls, and then after that, of course, we get a nice another chunk of comedy in there uh, with another bedroom harassment scene, which is like they kind of play that one uh, uh, going to the well a bit too much with that type of uh, shenanigan there. But it felt like almost like a rehash of the last film a little bit, but it's it's still kind of amusing. So about sixty minutes in, then we get another good assassination scene, and then. Uh, and then we have a finale. So this movie does have enough action, again, to satisfy. It's just you're having chunks, you know, little chunks of time in there where it's missing. Now, the finale has Richard Norton versus Sammo Hung, which is a good fight. Yasuaki Karata versus Jackie Chan, and then Sammo Hung, which was good. And then even Yun Byu gets a few moments as well. So that, again, when, you're, when the movie ends, you're, you're satisfied. You are. So even if you think the humor is underwhelming in spots, they, these movies end pretty strong in terms of action. I think this is a nice trilogy of fun movies, but I would not rank these in, like, an upper echelon list of personal favorites. Uh, even if I was classifying... If I was doing, like, a top Jackie Chan list or Samuel Hung list or Yun Bu list, I don't think these three films would really make the top of the, the heap, I don't think. Um, like I said, the narrative's kind of sloppy. The humor works, but it still kind of takes away from the action, which is better than the humor. Um, but uh, they're good, though. I could definitely see myself rewatching these again on a fairly regular basis. Like, it actually does make a nice triple feature, I think. My favorite, I don't know, it'd be between the, one, between the first two. Possibly My Lucky Stars, because it has a haunted house scene, and probably the funniest gag of the whole trilogy. And uh, my least favorite might be Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars, if only because the humor is a little less effective in that one, I think. But hey, if you haven't seen these, you may want to check them out. You know, but be prepared for a lot of comedy. That's all I'm saying. The trilogy is available on a very impressive Blu-ray set from Eureka. And as always, I will see you next time.